Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown. And having heard what I've heard so far in the Alex Murdoch trial, and uh, the defense now putting on their part of this court case, I will have to say, I think there's a very good chance the defense will win. Now, why do you, I say that? All right. <clears throat> I think if this had been a professional jury, something I'm totally in favor of, I think this trial would have gone on for one week and Murdoch would have been found guilty. However, we have a, a civilian jury system and that changes things. Now, I've often said, and some people don't like the way I say it, I call the civilian jury system 12 people off a bus stop. Why do I say that? It's because these are 12 untrained people. They have zero training in forensics crime scene analysis, behavioral analysis, and everything else that one would think someone who is going to make a final decision on a trial where many experts are paraded out there, you would have people who have high qualifications for being able to analyze. But that's not the way the jury system works in the United States. It literally is 12 people off a bus stop. So the defense knows this, and they're also very aware of what can win a case when you have 12 people without that kind of training. So here's what I think is happening here. Now, the prosecution has put on an excellent case. The circumstantial evidence is pretty damning, pretty damning. But now we come to, to the defense and they're playing this defense game. There's not a video of the crime and there's not DNA from the crime. And therefore, no matter how crappy this guy is, no matter that he's a big fat liar, no matter that he's money laundering and let's see, what does he, what does he got here? Let me, let me look, let me look at the list here. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Alleged, he allegedly arranged his own death for insurance payout. 100, 100 charges against him for vi various financial crimes, including fraud, money laundering, tax evasion, and forgery. Oh, but hey, just because he's a pretty crappy guy doesn't mean he's a murderer. That, that's the kind of thinking they use. So if, if they don't have that actual moment framed for the jury, that video of the homicides going down, and they don't have DNA that connects him to the crime scene, they say ignore all the other circumstantial evidence. That's, that's what they're saying. Now, interestingly, the, the, uh, the prosecution had brought out the audio where you can hear his voice on it. Um, the phone, on the phone. And pe five people have said, hey, that's Alex Murdoch's voice. But five minutes before, his wife and son were killed over there where the, with the doggies, right? And he's denied it and denied it and denied it. Well, today, the defense puts him on the stand. And this is usually, the reason they usually do something like this is because they know the prosecution's case is excellent. And the only good chance they have is to convince the jury that this guy, in spite of everything, feels some feel feels sorry for the guy, feels sorry for him. He's willing to even sit here on the stand and, and, and tell you the story and actually come clean with the truth. He's going to come clean today. And he did, you know, he admitted, he admitted finally, oh, he was actually there. At, you know, where, where the dogs and his wife and son were. He was right down there. When up until now, he's claimed he wasn't there at all. But let me, I'm going to read to you a little from the Daily Beast because uh, they have a, a pretty good little article here on what happened today. And I'm going to do some commentary on that. So anyway, today you took the stand, it says. All right. Almost uh, two years of speculation and a stunning fall from grace as a once prominent South Carolina lawyer, Alex Murdoch, took, finally took the stand Thursday to provide a jaw-dropping testimony in his double murder trial, including a concession that he'd been lying to authorities for years because of drug-induced paranoia. <laughs> okay, just got to start laughing right there. Drug-induced paranoia. So that causes you to lie because you took drugs. He lies about everything, even when the drugs aren't in his system, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. I did lie to them, Murdoch told a packed uh, count, uh, courtroom four weeks into the trial. As my addiction evolved, over time, I would get into these situations or circumstances where I would get paranoid thinking. 
although I don't know what the paranoid thinking has to do with this actual particular incident, breaking down several times on the stand. <laughs> well, he did a good job of that. Mm. Uh, Murdoch told a pact. Oh, sorry, I went, I went backwards a, a paragraph. Let me go down here. Breaking down several times on the stand, Murdoch insisted he did not murder his 52-year-old wife, Maggie, and his 22-year-old son, Paul, at the dog kennels of the family's hunting estate on June 7th, 2021. I love this next statement. This is where statement analysis comes in. And this is in quotes here. I did not shoot my wife or my son any time. Well, I thought there was only one time in question. Were there other times in questions? You didn't shoot them any time? Well, you didn't shoot them any time. You shot them this time. And then he says, ever. Well, again, it was only once. You never shot them ever? Yeah, I think right about there you did. Mm, I'm surprised he didn't add never. All right, uh, let's see. He declared that almost immediately after taking the stand. But in order to finally tell his side of the story, he also had to admit that he was at the kennels with his wife and son minutes before they were murdered, even though he had previously told investigators that he was asleep at the main house at the time of the slayings. Prosecutors previously showed jur jurors a video film, oh, it was an vi actual video, but this audio we're hearing, uh, by Paul at the kennels minutes before the murders, in which Alex and Maggie's voices could be he heard in the background. Murdoch said that he initially lied about being at the dog kennels because of his year-long addiction to opioids. I don't know what that has to do with lying about being at the, at the kennels at all, which made him paranoid. He was paranoid about what? Being accused of murder. That's, 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 not, that's not unreasonable paranoia. Um, he said that paranoia uh, set in during the first police interview in the squad car after he called 911. Yeah, because he thought, I'm going to be charged with double homicide. On June 7th, I wasn't thinking clearly. I don't think I was capable of reason, and I lied about being down there, and I'm so sorry that I did. I would never do anything intentionally to hurt them, ever. Again, ever. All right, his only uh, surviving son, Buster, is uh, watching Dad on the stand and looking sad. Um, and then he says, Murdoch says, oh, what a tangled web we weave. It's getting very poetic. Once I told the lie... And I told my family I had to keep lying about what exactly? That you didn't murder your wife and son? Murdoch 54 is facing four charges in connection with the June 2021 slayings. Prosecutors allege the brutal slayings were part of a desperate attempt to garner sympathy and evade questions over years of stealing from his law firm and clients. And the, I think the defense can say to the, the civilian jury, this is, this is not a very provable motive, which I will admit it isn't, but the prosecution doesn't have to prove motive. Um, a spokesperson for Murdoch's defense team told the Daily Beast on Thursday morning that Murdoch wanted to testify that it was going to be a last minute decision that morning. Ultimately, the spokesperson noted the final decision was up to Alex. Oh, of course, they didn't really plan this out, you see. Um, so it's a risky thing taking the stand, that's true, because it says, while Murdoch is on trial for murder, he is separately facing upwards of 80 criminal charges for a slew of financial misdeeds, drug trafficking, and money laundering. And it goes on about the insurance payment, too. Uh, then it says this. Uh, hold on one second. Oh, here we go. Scott Evans, a trial attorney, uh, said that he, even though he did all these other things, one of the key defenses for the uh, his, one of the key defenses a key theme for the jury, and here's the biggie, that possessing the ability to commit financial crimes is entirely different from possessing the ability and the lack of conscience necessary to massacre your wife and child. I'm going to say BS. If you, have, if you can commit as many crimes as this guy did over this many years, lie this many times, manipulate, deceive, steal, do everything he's done. That man has no conscience. He is a psychopath. And a psychopath can move from one thing to another when it's necessary. People are either useful or they're in the way. And I believe at that point in time, on that day, when he went down to the kennels, his wife and his son were in his way of being able to achieve what he wanted to achieve. And they were just collateral damage for him. Because 
I will stand by he is a psychopath. Uh, let's see. Um, but without murder weapons or DNA evidence to tie Murdoch to the scene, prosecutors have relied on cell phone data, which is excellent because they even proved that when he arrived at the scene <clears throat> later after he, after the, they were murdered and he left the scene and these cartel people came running in and shot them down. <laughs> 12 year olds came in and shot them down because they didn't like the way they were treating the dogs. I don't know what happened right after he left the, the kennels. And then he went over to his mother's house to set up what the prosecution says an alibi and to maybe get rid of a couple of weapons. Um, they have all that tracked phone, uh, the, the cell phone and all that. He also arrives back at the kennels to find, they discover the bodies and he claims he went in and he tried CPR on them. And, um, what, what was interesting about that is when the police got there, he had a white shirt on. There was no blood on it. So that's a lie. And supposedly the cell phone said that after he arrived, they had the car arriving at the kennels. 20 seconds later, he makes the phone call to 911. So there's no time for him to do all these life-saving techniques, you see. So that's a lie. Um, so they had all of that, but they don't have ballistic evidence. That's true. Um, well, they have ballistic evidence, uh, similar types of guns uh, that he has. Um, they have been able to poke holes in Murdoch's alibi with the video Paul took shortly before the murders. Absolutely. But here is the problem. We have a civilian jury. So the civilian jury often goes with wanting solid physical evidence and finding that if the circumstantial evidence is hard for them to say, okay, all of these things put together make up the puzzle. But the defense will say there's a puzzle piece missing. And that one puzzle piece missing is the actual moment of the murders. And there's nothing physically to put physical evidence to put him there committing the crime. And then they add in what they've added in today, all the emotion, him crying and crying and crying and being willing to tell the story and being willing to admit he's a liar. And then they tell the jury again, he may be a liar. He may have done all these other things, but that doesn't make him a killer. And a civilian jury will go there and say, you know, that's true. We can't absolutely say that he's a killer because they do not understand how to put all the circumstantial evidence together to the point where you say there is no reasonable doubt. This is why I want a professional jury system. But I'm, I'll be curious to see whether what, what the verdict comes back on this case. Uh, all I can hope is if it's 12 people off a bus stop, they pick the right 12 people off a good bus stop. That's all I can say. All right, that's it. Uh, please, if you haven't been to my channel before and you like what I offer here, I have a lot of uh, uh, crime analyses on this, on this channel, criminal profiling. Please do subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you. Uh, maybe I'll see you after the verdict uh, because I'll be curious, as all of us are, how it's going to end. Bye.